Hi everyone, it's Rick again. I've uh, moved on with my game idea. I've got some interaction now with the bat. If you remember, we have a main menu and we have a game scene. So I've just been working on pressing the left and right of this bat and making that more interactive. So if we look at the source code now, we go to this section here, which is the main loop. If you remember, we're, we're calling the scene game and we're syncing it so that gets drawn. Um, you can see game.scene, so game underscore sync will make sure the whole scene is drawn. Now we're going to jump to a routine, go sub user input. So we jump down to here and we're doing a check to see if anything's been pressed on the screen. So if there's been an interaction, if it's on Windows, it'd be a mouse click. If it was um, on a mobile device, it'd be a touch input. And then we're saying, well, at that point of get pointer X and get pointer Y, uh, have we hit a sprite? We're using get sprite hit to determine that. And we set that value of that sprite, if there is one, to hit sprite. So we then say, if the variable hit sprite equals game underscore seesaw. So what's game underscore seesaw? Well, if we go to the game scene, you may remember that this bat, its property, its unique variable is game underscore seesaw. So we're, we're checking in this bit of a code, have we hit that sprite? Okay. And if we have, then what we're going to do is we're going to determine which side of the bat has been touched. Because it's a whole big sprite, we need to know has it been touched on the left or touched on the right. To do that, we get sprite x position, which is the bat's position, game seesaw, and we also get its width. Uh, we make bat x its x position and bat w its width. And then we have um, a variable called bat middle. We say add the x position plus half of the width. So if we just look at the scene, there's the x position there. And if we added half the width, we would get the exact middle position of the bat. Okay. Now, so bat middle is then that value. So if the get pointer x, remember we've we've had an interaction here, get pointer pressed. So if the x position that's been pressed is less than the bat middle, then we must have pressed on the left hand side. So then we set this value called side equals minus two. If it was not less than bat middle, then it must have been touched on the right. So we set side equals two. And side is just a, a variable that we're going to add to the angle. You'll see this in a moment. So now we've determined which side of the bat has been touched. Then we have some code here that says, well, if side equals minus two, i.e. it's been touched on the left, then let's get the current angle of the sprite which is the bat get the current angle that currently it's like flat so i guess that's zero degrees and we just check to see is it greater than or less than or equal to 45 degrees because it's going to go up to 360 and, and then wrap over to uh, counting up so if it's within that range then we can add minus two so we're going to reduce the angle by minus two otherwise we just make sure it sticks to that value which is as far as it will go when it's rotating uh, anti-clockwise but if side was two i.e. was pressed on the right then the same bit of code but we, again we're checking for different degrees so as long as bat angle is less than 45 or it's greater than or equal to 315 then we can add 2 to it, otherwise fix it to 45 degrees. Took a bit of working out that, but it's, um, it's all set right. And then that returns back out of that loop, uh, of that routine. So we jump back to the code here, go to user input, and then um, we have set sprite angle of the bat with bat angle. And then we have go to a ball check, and this is just checking to see if the ball has uh, gone right down the bottom of the screen. So we first we set y equals get sprite y game ball. Again, if we go to the scene, the variable game ball, there we are, we're referencing it there. 
if that's greater than 1650 then it must be really down the bottom of the screen so we reset the sprite Y position I've just set it to 50 and it's higher up on the screen I'm setting the X position of the ball to a random number between well 540 is the middle of the screen uh, minus the width uh, of the seesaw because I don't want it I want it to be in range of the seesaw when it uh, is recreated I divide them by, by 2 a bit complicated that but it just means that um, when it's recreated on, on the screen it's not uh, out of reach from the seesaw anyway let's just run the game have a look so here's the ball and we can now interact with the bat and it drops and resets to the top and as you can see I can click left and right like that to interact with the ball and we've got some interesting physics starting to, to happen in the game and that was the purpose of that code so let's quit that that's where I'm up to now. I think what I need to do next is, as each ball comes down, uh, if we go to the scene, I want to detect whether it's gone into the, into here or into here, and I want to set the, the ball to either green or red, and these buckets can be different colours as well. And then we'll have like, if you put the wrong coloured ball in the wrong coloured uh, bucket, then the game will be over. And also the speed of the ball coming down will increase and then it'll just be a case of how many times you can do this before uh, you make a mistake. And that'll be the basis of the game. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed today's uh, video and um, I'll get back to coding and hopefully bring you another video next week. Okay, take care.